Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be a continuation in my Marth to uh, Marth Mars to Earth series that I'm doing. Should be a fairly short series because we're concentrating mostly on just the uh, the aspect of the flight where we want to plan, we want to have our fuel planning be extremely accurate, and I find that one of the best ways to really put that sort of through the litmus test is to do a flight and basically only give yourself enough fuel to do exactly what you have to do and no more. So by the time we arrive at the, our destination, we should basically have about zero meters per second. I mean, we'll, we should have maybe a couple meters left over, but basically we'll be completely dry by the time we get home. And if, we, if our calculations are correct, then that will be the case. So uh, let me switch camera views here. <clears throat> And let's uh, take a quick look at the spreadsheet. Between the last video and this one, I did a, a quick uh, update to the sheet. And I added a column over here for, basically it's kind of like the override. So this will be the pre-flight column. And again, I'll probably clean up this sheet at some point and maybe move all this to another page. But this is our pre-flight setup. This is what we figure out when we're on the ground. And then this is our actual flight. This is what actually occurred when we did the flight. And it's good to know this, uh, or it's good to have this information because what actually happens on any given flight is never going to be exactly what you planned for. There are just, there are just too many variables. You know, there are atmospheric effects, there are gravity effects, there are certain things that you just can't account for. And it's going to change things by a little bit, but it shouldn't be a lot. So, for example, uh, we pr I predicted that the cost to launch to orbit would be uh, 40 uh, 4037 and 50 the actual cost to launch to orbit was 3969 that's uh that's a that's a pretty good difference so if i find that i'm consistently having this number in my actual flight then i'll probably want to reduce the cost of my launch to orbit in my fuel planning stage uh, one thing I don't have here in the pre-flight setup because I just didn't have it before is the cost to align the plane oh and by the way this is the cost to uh get to orbit and circularize so there's there's actually two things in there and I might make a separate row just for that because there's the there's the fuel that you use to get up to Miko and then there's going to be a circularization cost but not all flights are going to have circularization so that's why it might be um, interesting to put that into its, into its own row so that if your flight doesn't have circularization then you don't really necessarily have to include that um, Although when you circularize, you're increasing your velocity, so the cost to injection, the cost of injection will cost more if you don't circularize first. Uh, anyway, the uh, next part is the injection burn. You can see that we were very accurate on that. We predicted, calculated, I shouldn't say predicted, we calculated that it would cost 2035 and it actually costed 2033. And again, that's the altitude difference when you're in orbit around a given body, your calculations based on a stable 200 by 200 orbit or 300 by 300 orbit, whatever it is, but that it's based on a specific altitude. And when you actually get to orbit, especially if you have non-spherical gravity sources enabled, it will not be an exact 200, 200, by, or 200 by 200 orbit. It might be 204 on one side and 199 on the other side. And that small difference in altitude will actually change uh, the, the injection cost ever so slightly. Then we calculated that we would have 189.49 meters per second left after uh, we completed the injection burn. And we actually had 197.79 left. If we look at uh, if we look at burn time calculator, we can see it's 197.561. That small difference between the 79 and the 561 is probably just RCS, the rotation in um, you know rotation uh, yaw and those maneuvers that aren't calculated in and that's why it's really important to keep that cost as low as possible because if you're wasting a bunch of uh, rcs fuel on rotations and yawing and doing all that type of thing then you would probably you would have to include another line just for d uh, just for rotational waste you know five meters per second or 10 meters per second worth of wasted fuel just for rotation so then we, we, we calculated or we assumed that we're going to do the mid-course correction in about 100 days. 
And between the time that we do the injection burn and the time that we arrive uh, at 100 days, we calculated that we would gain 19.79 meters per second worth of delta V. But in our actual flight, since we had 197 meters left over instead of 189, we're actually going to gain just a little bit more. You can see it's almost no difference at all. But I thought that it would be interesting to keep a column over here for this because on flights where you have a lot more delta V after the injection burn is done, then this number could actually be significant. If you have, you know, 500, let's say you predict, uh, you calculate that you're going to have 500 meters per second left over after the injection burn, but you actually end up with 600 or 700 left over, then this number could actually be a little more significant than just, you know, what is that? Not even a whole meter per second. So by the time we arrive at the, the time to do our mid-course correction, uh, we calculated originally in the pre-flight setup that we would have 209.28, but now given the actual flight data, I calculate that we will instead have 218.45. So let's kind of just see how accurate our predictions are and go forward to the mid-course correction. Jump back inside the XR2. Let's uh, make sure radiator's open. It is. And let's warp time forward a little slowly here at first because we're still right here at Mars. And we get some weird uh, things that can happen if you warp time forward too much when you're in close to a body. And we'll see the PEA at Earth wobble in and out. Hopefully it won't wobble too much, but uh, it will require mid-course correction. Again, when you go in toward the sun, the accuracy of interplanetary MFD isn't as good as it is when you go out away from the sun. Or maybe it's just Earth to Mars or Mars to Earth. I haven't gone all everywhere in the solar system yet using interplanetary MFD. But we know that going from Earth to Mars, it's very, very accurate. But uh, going back toward Earth, it's not as accurate. Okay, rotation. let's do a kill rotate here. It's not doing us any good. Let's uh, warp time forward. And when we get out away from the uh, gravitational, when we get out into the weak sphere of influence of Mars, in the HUD updates, we'll, we'll orient our vessel prograde to the sun, then do a kill rotation. That seems to help keep the vessel um, from spinning around so much. Go out to 10,000 for now, though, just to get out there. There we are to orbit sun now. Let's go back to real time. Let's see if we can orient toward prograde and do this trick. I don't know if it works only for... Not sure if this trick only works for uh, prograde or not. So now we're rotated at retrograde. We are still probably within the weak SOI of Mars. Yeah, we are. So there might still be some uh, quite a bit of spinning. It looks like it's holding pretty, pretty stable. All right, let's warp time forward. And again, we want to go to a you know at least 80 days, maybe a little bit uh, maybe a little bit farther than that, but 80, 80, 80 to 90 to 100 days when we do our mid course correction. And you can see the PEA is way out now, but it's coming back down. And I think that has I think that's largely due to Earth's moon because it just causes the prediction to, to wobble quite a bit. So we're at 30 days. I'm not really sure when to say the best time is to do that mid-course correction, but I kind of think that when you get out toward the 80-day point, which uh, let me show what that looks like on... Let me reference the sun and target Earth. So we are uh, here, we are, we're, we're, eh, rather, we are here, and I'm thinking when we get kind of over toward this point, then it's a good time to do a mid-course correction. I don't think you want to go forward too much farther than that. And what, what I'll kind of look for, instead of just saying a specifically 100 days, you want to watch when you reach a, a low point when you get close to 100 days. I think that's probably the best thing to do. So you can see the PEA, you know, wobbling back in. And it's probably going to, you know, it'll reach a low point and then it's going to wobble back out. But I'm thinking, you know, we'll just kind of watch our time here. Now it's going back out. Let's 
it's reached its high point, now it's coming back in. So probably when it reaches its low point here, we'll be close to that 100-day mark. Actually, it looks like we'll, we'll probably be able to go forward again. So let's let it hit it low. Let's let it hit its low point, climb, and then we'll wait for it to come back in. But what we will do for sure is we'll check at 100 days to see how accurate our DV gain due to LOX consumption was. There we are. We're at 100 days. So let's bring up burn time calculator and make sure that uh, the extra fuel mass is set correctly. It is. We now have 218.304, so let's check our calculations. And you can see that our prediction was 209.28 in the pre... Not a prediction, a calculation. Our calculation in the pre-flight setup was 209.28, but we are actually... Uh, our, our actual prediction is 218.45, which is almost spot on. I mean, it says 218.304. So that's very close to what we actually are. And in fact, the only reason this is off by even just a little bit is because when we did the, uh, when, when this calculation is done, it doesn't take into account the APU fuel burn, which is very, which is very slight, but there's just a little bit of fuel, uh, APU fuel burn and a little bit of LOX burn that happened in that first hour that we took off. If we included that into this actual flight calculation, then this would probably say, to 18304 okay so uh, again now now we're at 100 days but we're going to warp time forward we're going to continue going forward until the uh, PEA has reached its lowest point uh, for this for this particular wobble I just I don't think it does any good to or I don't think it's as efficient to do the make course corrections when your PA is higher. So here it's coming down and still coming down. And just watching it really closely. Okay, it's still coming down. Now it's going back up. Okay, so now 113 days, let's call it 114 days because it's almost been 24 hours. So we're going to put that into our actual because uh, we didn't do the mid-course at 100 days. Instead, we're going to do it at 114. And because of that, we have a, a little bit more gain. Instead of 23.9, it's, uh, or instead of whatever it was before, it's now 23.9. So we should actually have 221.69 right now or very close to it. And 229.4, again, within within basically a rounding error, we have what we said we would have. So let's do let's do our mid-course correction to get uh, things lined back up better with Earth. And I think uh, there's a couple ways we can do that. And I I think what we might want to do is go to uh, the course program and uh, not be in burn that I'm still learning how to navigate this program. It's just a little, and we want to go up here and we're going to go to target intercept and set up j just to have it give us like a ballpark figure uh, or have it, have it guide us for what we want. So let's uh, set to target intercept now target earth. And we want to make sure that the source is our vessel. Uh, if, you, if, you, if the source is the planet, then you won't have any data here that makes any sense at all. So make sure the source is your vessel at this point. Now we want to change this arrival date because this arrival date is erroneous. Our actual arrival date, we probably should have wrote that down. I might still have it available to me in Transex. I do. So let's put in this arrival date. Um, this is something as, as part of a procedure. I should start writing that number down. So we're going to set our arrival date to 58435.5 is good. And it says in order to, now we have a delta V, don't look at the total, but just look at the DV here. We need a 29 meter per second correction in order to get back on track with Earth. Now, I think though, to be even more accurate than that, the, this gives us the 
this gives us a starting point, but to be more accurate, I think what we can do is bring up Interplanetary MFD and let's actually unshare side one, unshare, and let's go to the course program here and go to delta V velocity. Make sure I'm doing this right. And we want to put in the amount of delta V that we see here, which is, uh, first of all, I think we can also use the target intercept program to tweak this a bit. So before we commit to that in the delta V program, we can, you know, change the uh, arrival date by, you know, plus or minus just to see what happens with the delta V. You can see there it's improving significantly. That's, well, it's going down a little bit, not significant, but a little bit. And we can maybe also see about when we do the burn, because right now it's saying that, that the, the, the time to do this burn would be right now. Let's see if we change that and do it a little bit later. Let's go 100x. And it doesn't really seem to be helping, so let's just set that back to zero. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and copy this plan uh, over, to Delta over to the Delta Velocity program. And then we'll use the map interplanetary interplanetary's map program on this side to dial in what we want. It's a little confusing. It's a little bit of back and forth. And um, if you're you, if you're if you're really familiar with transacts, then this might seem harder. But I've only done this a few times, and I'm already comfortable with it. It doesn't it doesn't really take that much to learn this. So we can set the TEJ, which is just when we're going to do the burn. That's like setting the eject date in Transex. We're just going to put it out into the future a little bit, you know, 180 seconds, just to give us time to do this. And you don't really have to. Well, yeah, you do have to do that. And the DV, again, is 25.36. So set 25.36. Now we're going to bring up the map program. And I always hit select, so I think I'm going to a different MFD. But we want to go menu, map, actually share. We want to, Now we need to share that side. So share side zero. And target earth. And press all the buttons. AZO. Display. Page over here. SOI. Plan. Page back over to this side. Select to the earth. Now... This has, this is saying if we do that, then this is going to be our P8 or that's not desirable. So let's uh, work with this Delta V here a little bit and see what happens. Uh, let's go to maybe 10x. I must have put the delta V in, in the wrong direction because obviously, yeah, I the, the other intercept program must have had it as negative delta V and I didn't realize that. So you can see we're getting in closer at 15 meters a second. And let's give ourselves a little bit more time to do this though. So let's go back and set to 240. That'll be four minutes. Give us more time to set this up. And again, I, it's not going to be perfect to get this set, you know, down to zero at this point. So just get it as well as you can and, we're, and just know that we're going to have to do a second mid-course correction. So let's see what plane change does. That's not better. That's better. And note here, like, you know, this says negative 22 and negative 13. You d when you're when you do a burn, you're not actually adding those together. You might think that the total delta V would be, uh, you know, let's call it 23 plus 13, which would be 39. But notice it's not. It's it, it's a it's a Pythagoras equation that you do here to figure out what that total delta V is going to be. That's just something that's interesting to note because in Transex, in the in the old days before it would actually show you what your total delta V was. It was always difficult to know, you know, when you put in like a ton of plane change, for example, you might think, oh my God, I'm adding all this delta V. But then when you look at the actual total, even though you might be adding two, 300 
plane change, your overall total has only gone up by like 10 meters a second. That's just the way the equation works. Uh, let's go back to the focus on the PEA, bringing that down. And we got it way down. Now we're uh, impacting the earth. So we'll go with that plan. I think that's pretty good. Uh, maybe, yeah, let's just go with that plan. So 32.48 meters per second is what our first mid-course correction is going to cost us. So let me tab over to the, um, to, the, to the flight log just to put that in here. So DV at 100 days, and in this case it was actually not 100 days, but, um, but 114. So what, are, what is our DV? 221.408. I should actually say DV at uh, maybe first MCC. resizing that column so it doesn't wrap and then the delta v after the mid course correction okay so this says we gained 23 meters per second and the other calculator says we gained 23 meters per second okay all right so we'll go to a page here bring up the uh, burn vector and we'll Translation. we can save a little bit of fuel if we rotate toward the burn vector ourselves. and if we miss the time it's no big deal we can set the time forward by another few seconds we missed it okay there we got the burn vector in the middle and if I had if I had let the if I had let IMFD rotate it would have used more fuel so we can save fuel uh, and then we can just auto burn here. We don't have to reset the time, I don't believe. Okay, let's bring back up map MFD real quick. Uh, Interplanetary's map, rather. Turn off the plan, which is like shutting off maneuver mode in Transex. And we just want to see that the PEA uh, isn't off by any any amount and it still says that it's what what it was before so now I want to know what my what burn time calculator says my delta V remaining is so I can log it and again the main reason I'm logging all this is just because it helps with future flights it helps me know it helps me plan for future flights so uh, 188.2 is what we actually have left over after the MCC And let's check our calculation, our prediction, our calculation. We said that after after the first MCC, DV remaining after the MCC. Oh, uh, yeah, I haven't yet because I said that the Del I said it would cost one fifty, uh, but this is because this plan still only ha only accounts for one mid-course correction and really for flights like this you're going to have more than one it's going to be two three maybe even four so in an, in a in another update again i'm going to add you know mid-course correction one mid-course correction two mid-course correction three but for now we we have a, an assumption that we're only going to do one it's actually not an assumption that we're going to do one, and it's an assumption that the total cost of all mo of all MCCs will be 150. So we just spent uh, we just spent uh, 33.2 on that one. So for our mid course correction cost allocation, we still have about 120 meters per second left worth of uh, mid course corrections that we that we that we calculated that we would have. All right, let's go back to orbiter and warp time forward farther. We need to get out probably um, I, I, 185 days is kind of what my next mark is, but I might go forward a little bit farther than that since we, you know, same same deal. When the when map MFD shows that that wobble has kind of stopped, that's when I think you want to do the mid course correction. So warping time forward. 
there it's going way out and let me go back to that view because I need to see the days you know, out and in out and in and it looks like here the low point is gonna be okay it's still going down that's good about 93 so when we get past 185 days we'll look for the next time that the PEA reaches about 95 or 93 and that's when we'll do the next mid-course correction okay it's coming down again and again we'll probably go past this one because we're gonna hit the low point uh, there we just did actually it was 190 at that point so it looks like it's getting a little bit worse So we'll bring back up, bring up orbit on that side. So here again, when it reaches its low point, we'll do the next one because we're past that 185 day point. That I, Warning, oxygen low. System that's fine. Set. We have the locks. And it's starting to go back up. So let's do our next mid-course correction and then we'll probably wrap up this part of the video. So we've still got 41 days of locks, just double checking for my own sake. And uh, let's bring up burn time calculator real quick. And that's now 15.3. So we have, um, actually I can't calculate, actually I was going to say what do we have for this. But again, since I only have one mid-course correction in this one, I can't tell. So delta V after... Um, 185 days or second MCC. Actually, it doesn't. Even, I'm just gonna say at first MCC because for if you go to some place other, if you do some other flight, it's never gonna be exactly 100 days, 185 days. So first MCC, second MCC, third MCC. Okay, DV at third MCC is. 206.588 so we've gained an, an additional 18 meters per second due to LOX consumption and uh, same thing here we'll bring up um, see this side is shared with that side so let's bring up interplanetary over here let's go to Uh, previous and target intercept again to give us that initial to give us that initial amount target earth and again I should have wrote down the day but I didn't uh, four five eight four three five according to our plan so set five eight Four three five point five. Now we have a delta V of eighty one, but hopefully we can bring that down. You can see the closer we get, the more expensive it gets to do the uh, to get to do the corrections. So let's do first of all a bit of an adjustment just on the arrival time because that helped a lot last time, and it's not doing as much for us this time. Yeah, well that's that's better. It's better than what it was. 71, 70, 70, and yeah, the further we go forward, the worse it gets, so we need to do it, the sooner we do it, the better we are, now we'll bring up the uh, Delta V program over here, so we can copy that plan over, Um, I think we have to unshare the side first. Yeah, now I can bring up the Delta V program over here. And put in that number. Now, 
bring up the, I keep hitting select. I keep thinking that I want to go to a different MFD. Bring up the map program on this side, but first we want to share. And we're at 30 minutes, so I'll try to get through this quickly and target Earth. SOI, plan, page over here. Display, Azo is already off apparently. Age, make sure I've got everything. Okay, I didn't have SOI on, not that it matters, it's just a visual thing. Page over. All right, now we can start adjusting our delta V to see if we can dial that back down to Earth. And again, I think I might have put it in backwards because it was backwards before, so let me actually try that. Let's put in negative 72 instead of positive 72. Well, I'm not sure. But before, it seemed backwards. Okay, that's... You know what it is? Actually, in the target intercept program... I, I think I should have looked at the burn vector because it might not have been all prograde. It might have been some plane change and some inward outward. So actually, let me go ahead and end this part of the video here since I am at 30 minutes. And when we come back, I'm going to re I'm going to reset up this uh, maneuver, the second mid course correction, because I think I did it wrong in target intercept. So if you like this part of the video, like it, don't like it, leave comments down below, check the links for the, uh, check the description for links, including my uh, frequently asked questions, which is all the way at the very bottom. A lot of people don't seem to notice that, and they ask me the same questions over and over. So check the uh, FAQ down there at the very bottom. And I got a Facebook fan page like that if you want, so you can follow my activity, my orbiter activity on Facebook, and I will see you in the next part.